guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're here for the first time, my name is Anne and in today's video I'm going to show you how I created this makeup look. So a while back I filmed a video where I used the 35M palette from Morphe, which is this one. Um, I did a green look, I guess. Yeah, it was a green look. And some of you requested to, uh, like for me to do another video using this palette. So today I just played with some warmer colors. And this is how it turned out. Um, yeah, basically because so many people requested it, I felt like, why not? So yeah, this is how, what I came up with. And yeah, if you want to see how I did this, then keep on watching. So the first palette I'm going to use is this Morphe and Jaclyn Hill palette. This is the original palette they launched at the first time. And I'm going in with this light, soft brown color. I am going to play with a different palette, but that palette doesn't really contain like a very new transition shade. So that's why I use this palette instead. So I'm taking my Sigma E40 brush and I'm going to blend this all over my crease, going back and forth from the inner corner to the outer corner. And I think I went uh, back in with this eyeshadow for around three times to really build up the color in my crease. I wanted it to really show up. So now I'm going in with the palette, which is the 35M, which is one of a new palette by Morphe. And I'm going to use this, yeah, what is it? <laughs> it's like a pinky red kind of color. It's really beautiful. So I'm going to start blending that in my crease as well. I'm going to slowly build it up because this shade is quite dark. Um, so I'm just trying to not apply too much of this shadow in my crease and just go back in with more and more, but just slowly build it up. So normally when I do my eye makeup, I apply my foundation afterwards, but for today's video, I have already applied my foundation just to make the whole makeup process a little bit quicker for myself. Um, so I had to be quite careful with like the fallout. I didn't have like a lot of problems with this, thankfully, but that's also a reason why I didn't apply too much product in one on my brush to kind of prevent that I would have like a lot of fallout uh, falling onto my foundation Then now I'm taking a shade which looks kind of similar, but it's slightly darker and I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to blend it in my crease as well trying to focus all around my crease just to darken it up I really wanted this shade to be as obvious as possible um, Because I wanted the base to be like really reddish So now I'm taking this orangey golden color and I'm going to apply this all over the eyelids. I'm taking my MAC 2 for 2 brush but later on I'm going to use my finger. I felt like this was so much more easier to apply. And I have to say I was kind of disappointed by this shade. I felt like I had to go back in a lot of times to make this color really show up. It's not really like if you're... If you know the eyeshadows from Makeup Geek, the foiled ones, these are really nice and easy to apply. But with this one, I had to apply a lot to make it kind of show up. Then I'm taking the shade right next to that, which is a matte orangey color. And I'm going to blend a little bit of that eyeshadow in my crease as well. Just because I felt like the contrast of the orangey gold on the eyelid and the reddish in my crease. I just felt like the contrast was a bit too big, so I applied a little bit of that in my crease to warm it up. Then I'm going to use this darker shade, which is even darker than the colors I used in my crease. Pressing this right underneath the lower lash line using a Sigma Flat Diviner brush. And just kind of pressing this right underneath the lower lash line and pressing it as tight as possible. Then after that, I'm going to use um, that orangey color again using a pencil brush from Morphe. And I'm going to use this orangey color to blend out the lower lash line to make that dark burgundy color that I just applied before uh, a little bit more smooth and blend it out. Then now for my eyeliner, I'm taking the Maybelline New York Studio Gel Eyeliner. I'm going to create a line above the lash line and I'm using a winged liner brush from Sigma Beauty. I have a special discount code for everything on Sigma Beauty. If this is a affiliate link, I have it down in your scripture bar and this will give you a discount on their whole website. Mm -hmm. 
Then now on top of that Maybelline eyeliner, I'm going in with this NYX Matte Liquid Liner, which I always do. First, I always apply gel eyeliner and then I go on top of it with a liquid liner because I feel like layering your eyeliner with different formulas, it gives like a better appearance, uh, more definition, I guess. I'm not really sure what the name is, but I just feel like it makes a lot of a difference. I'm taking the Urban Decay 24-7 Glide On Pencil in the shade, I believe this one is called Lucky if I'm not mistaken. This is my all-time favorite pencil, this is so beautiful and it really makes my eye color stand out. I use this always on a daily base, it's just one of my favorite pencils. So then I'm going back in with the Morphe and Jaclyn Hill palette. And I'm going to take that first shade, oh no, not the first one, the second one. And I'm going to use that color for in the inner corner of my eye, just to kind of give it that extra pop of glam. I think this is actually a really beautiful color. It's not too cool tone, not too warm tone. I think this goes well with a lot of eyeshadow colors. So after this, I'm going to apply some lashes. I use the Tati Lashes in the style 21, which are a very natural lash style. It almost looks like your own natural lashes. So the eyes are now done. I really like how it turned out. First, when I went in with the pink shades, I kind of wanted to go for something more like burgundy, but it turned out quite like on the warm tone, very orangey, but I love how it turned out. I feel like shades like this kind of makes my eyes pop out the most, which I love, of course. Um, I'm now going to bronze my face. I'll be using the Hula Bronzer from Benefit Cosmetics. And I'm taking my big fluffy brush, which is the Morphe and Jaconil G802, to apply this. This is my current favorite brush for applying bronzer. It's just very big and fluffy, and I love how it applies. It just makes it apply really soft. Also applying a little bit underneath the jawline. But let me know in the comments, like, what do you guys do? Do you use a big fluffy brush for bronzer or do you use like a tinier one? And I always like use bronzers, which are like contour and bronzer in one. So maybe this is a weird question because most people, I think, like use a tinier brush for contouring and then go in with a bigger brush for bronzing. But I have like already natural kind of cheekbone so I don't really have to create one with a contouring shade. I feel like if I would go in with a contour shade as well and then go on top of it with a bronzer, sometimes it's just too intense, you know? So I always like use um, shades to contour which are not too warm, so it kind of counts as a bronzer and a contour one in one, if that makes sense. Oh, and I completely forgot to tell you guys that obviously I have already applied my foundation and concealer. Um, I'm using the same foundation and concealer every time I film a video, unless I show it in the video. Sometimes I do use something else. But um, the foundation I use is the NARS Cosmetics Radiant Longwear Foundation, which is my absolute favorite foundation. I think it's just so beautiful. And for my concealer, I always use the Tarte Cosmetics Shape Tape Concealer. So every time you see me filming a video where I'm not show my foundation part, that's like what I use on my face. I just feel like if I would show it every time, um, it would be kind of boring. But if you guys really like to see like the foundation uh, part included, then just let me know. Maybe I can include it. But for me, it just feels like using the same things over and over again, you know? So yeah, I'm just curious what you guys think. So now for my highlighter, I'm going in with the Fuego highlighter by Dose of Colors, which is my absolute favorite one. I do have to say I have a lot of favorites lately, but I think out of all of them, um, this one is definitely the prettiest one. So I'm taking my Morphe and Jaclyn G806 and blending this on the cheekbones. Also a little bit on the chin, on the nose, above the lips. Then now for my blush, I'm taking this NARS Cosmetics Luster Blush, applying this with my 127, what is it? 127? Yes, 127 um, Lux Sheer Cheek Brush, and applying this on the apples of my cheeks. I 
I'm also going to apply a little bit of the Luminoso blush from Milani on top of it. Just because I just really like this blush. Just a little bit on top of it. And then now for the lips, I'm taking the MAC Strip Down Lip Pencil. My all-time favorite lip pencil for whenever I go for something nude. And then I'm going in with this lip gloss from Natasha Denona, which is super light. Um, it's in the shade 19 Nude. I'm not really sure if it's too light. I hope I can pull it off. Um, but we shall see. Okay, I actually really like it. I think it's a very light nude, but I think because I used it in combination with a lip liner, I can kind of pull this off. If I would use it without a lip liner, it will probably fade into my own face. So yeah, I really like it. Um, I've never used this shade. Normally I always go in with the color Flesh. I think this one is slightly lighter, but it's really pretty. And then here you have the finished result. I really hope you guys enjoy watching this video. This is definitely a look that I would wear on a daily basis. I really love warm tones and like a nude gloss on the lips. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoy. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you did enjoy. This will be really helpful for my YouTube channel. Also, don't forget to comment down below what you want to see next. And hopefully I'll see you in my next video. <laughs> Bye guys!